Welcome to another one, everybody. I hope you're all well. If you haven't gathered from the title, this one is about another lens, uh, this time a 35 millimeter. Those of you who are familiar with the channel know that I'm usually shooting my talking head with a 35 millimeter. This time I'm using my 85. <laughs> that means that the camera is a mile away from me right now and uh, very difficult to use the uh, little tiny um, LCD on the camera to see myself at this distance. Normally I have a seven inch field world monitor underneath the camera where I'm monitoring myself and I'm able to see uh, my framing and focus and things like that. Unfortunately, that monitor recently crapped out on me. I've had the monitor for like four years and it's probably only got about 200 hours on it. Maybe during the holiday season, someone's gonna be nice enough to pick up one of those for me. <laughs> I don't know. It's not a hint uh, to you, Marmar. That's my girlfriend. Uh, so I've been using this monitoring app. I've got my iPad here at my feet. It's actually an app that's become pretty popular popular. It's much better than the app Sony provides for doing the same thing. Um, it's got basically all your information on it and uh, it's fantastic. Only downside is it's on an iOS device. I don't even know if it's available for Android. If it's not, I hope it will be soon because um, it is kind of handy. Downside though, connecting to uh, some Sony cameras. My a7C is not a fun camera to connect to over Wi-Fi because it never seems to work when you just go into your recently connected devices um, in the app and click on it. it. It just won't connect that way. You always have to do the whole thing with scanning the QRC code and it's kind of uh, tiresome and ridiculous and I know it's not a problem on the app developer side it's a Sony thing because I know other Sony people who've had the problem before people with the newer Sony cameras seem to have no problem at all connecting to the app and it's about time that I start talking about what I'm supposed to be talking about this lens 35 millimeter 1.8 from Sony uh, so you've got a uh, uh, pretty fast little lens it's super sharp it's a non G non GM lens but it does have a couple of the little premium features uh, like the AF MF button and the focus hole button focus hole button you can't program it to whatever I don't uh, ever use these for anything these focus hole buttons I actually used to use a focus hole button it's got your standard 55 millimeter filter thread on there very handy now the thing about this lens is that sort of makes it special uh, oh I have to also note that uh, it's uh, something like 700 bucks Canadian uh, I believe uh, I can put the uh, prices uh, down below here somewhere many youtubers of note have come to love this lens so what is it that makes this lens such a good lens for the talking head stuff well it's actually what makes this lens good for a lot of other things as well Practical considerations for the talking head thing, of course, being close enough to the camera, you can reach over and adjust whatever you have to or turn the camera off and on. Another practical consideration, in a small room, you're not gonna be able to use this setup I've got now with the 85 a mile away from me. Uh, you run out of room. And um, so why not go with an even wider lens if you've got a small space to get the camera even closer to you. If someone is sitting like I am right here on sort of the rule of thirds line on the periphery of the frame, you're going to get a little bit of uh, distortion. Like this ear might look like really huge because I'm on the edge of the frame. Now you'd have to go pretty wide to do that, but the 35 does reduce the distortion to the point where it actually makes it uh, a decent portrait lens. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a dedicated portrait lens, but you can do some really nice portraits with this lens. Uh, that 1.8 aperture as well gives you some nice creamy out of focus backgrounds, that shallow depth of field, that bokeh that uh, all the YouTubers talk about. Now a portrait photographer would probably recommend something like what I've got on my camera now, an 85 or even something narrower. Uh, 120 used to actually even be like a very popular portrait um, focal length uh, traditionally at least and I think a lot of photographers portrait photographers are now preferring the 85 which I prefer for portraits it's a little bit more of an intimate experience between the photographer and the subject because you are closer to them 
uh, and um, it's uh, a little bit easier to emote as well if you're trying to get a model to do what you want you can um, uh, they, they're going to see you a little bit easier at 85 millimeter rather than a 20 or a 120 I should say uh, anyway it's just a personal preference of uh, of mine but you do get that really nice uh, compression and, and things that the portrait photographers like when you're shooting with uh, an 85 or something uh, greater um, on our recent trip to Iceland I didn't expect to be using this so often for landscape photos actually I thought I'd be using my 18 more often with those beautiful vistas they have there uh, but actually I ran into situations where I uh, compositionally I wanted to cut out a lot more on the left and right hand sides of the frame and this came in very handy and as a result I was using this more than I was using my 18. I was actually thinking I wasn't going wide enough with 18 that I should probably uh, find something wider before we go on our trip. Thankfully I didn't because I ended up shooting with this more than the 18. So finally I'm going to show you uh, some examples, a little collection of things I shot with this lens so you get an idea of what you could do if you have one of these. Maybe you already have one of these lenses, never thought of using it for some of the stuff I use it for. Anyway, take a look at this. So this was shot at 2.8, so still had some room to knock out the background more. Beautiful Elora, Ontario. Some Icelandic horses. For Eurovision fans, this is Husavik, Iceland. This was actually lit with a LED from the shoreline, courtesy of my girlfriend. One of Iceland's beautiful waterfalls and the black sand beach in Iceland. So this lens has been out for a while already and for many people out there, both amateurs and professionals, you'll find it in their top five list of best lenses available for the Sony E-mount system uh, full frame. Um, specifically if you want to keep things lighter uh, because you know that the GM uh, equivalents of many lenses can get pretty heavy and this is one fantastic lens. I think the DxO Mark um, tests um, uh, prove that uh, as well as the DxO Mark test for the, the lens I'm shooting this with the 85 which I should probably do a video about uh, one day soon. Anyway, I hope you got something out of this one as usual. If so, that's great. Leave me a thumbs up. If not, that's okay too. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you don't want to miss any of these videos, hit that notification bell. Until next time, keep working to make your chosen idea a reality. Peace.